Yeah, all right, let's get started. Welcome, everybody. Welcome in into a, another training class we have. My name is Scott Morrison. I'm the host, and we are going to be talking about uh, what to do in the off-season for shaved ice shops. I'll show you my, my screen here in a second, uh, but welcome on in if you are new to uh, to our group or this is your first one, uh, first one of our trainings that you've attended, especially like to welcome you on in. Um, we're trying this a little bit different now, so I should be uh, broadcasting on Zoom. Um, as well as on Facebook Live. Fingers crossed all the technology works, but uh, hopefully you can see it on both places there. Um, regardless, we'll have some uh, replays that will be available a little bit later on as well. Um, in fact, if you could real quick, if you can hear me, just put in the chat here in uh, Zoom, especially that uh, you can hear this and make sure we're going okay. And I wanna make sure that uh, everything is working correctly with the technology here. Looks like we're doing all right. So let's get rolling then guys. Um, Close that up here. So I like to do um, these presentations, uh, these little PowerPoints. This is an app I, I use called Workflowy. Uh, and it walks us through just kind of some different things. So I own, I run a shaved ice shop. Um, I'll talk to you about that here in a second. Uh, but as I say, it's fall, pumpkin lattes are coming out all over the place. Does that make you laugh? How many pumpkin spice, everything that's around? Um, and they are all over the place. So uh, I guess that means that the fall is here. I live in Orlando. Um, I don't know if you can see by the camera. I'm wearing a sweater today. It's not because the weather is any different. It's still hot and sunny and stuff here, but it's because I wanted to feel like fall for at least for at least one day. So, um, but with that, the question comes is what should we do if you own a shaved ice shop? What should we do um, during slow times if you're going to close? And we're going to cover all those different topics and different things for you today and kind of figure out what's the best thing for you and your business. So by way of introduction, uh, that's the purpose of today is really look at off season. Uh, what should you be doing for your shop? If you have questions of things, please go ahead and put it in the chat. I'll should see live the Zoom questions. I may not see live right away the Facebook live ones. I'll do my best to be, keep an eye on those as well. Uh, I only have two eyes and a couple of monitors going at once. Uh, but I will. Uh, but just put in there if you have questions about things. If you're not sure, even if you're watching this in the replay later on, feel free to ask the questions about whatever questions might come up for you, and I'll be glad to tackle those and help you as we go through. Uh, a little bit about who I am. I find that this is important uh, that you understand a little bit my background. Uh, first off, let me know: is this the first presentation or class of mine that you've heard? That you've heard, excuse me, or have you been to others? Have you watched others? Just let me know in the chat if, uh, if you're a first timer or if you're a long timer. I guess we'll put it that way. But who I am? This is me in front of our business. So we own a shop called Snowmo Shaved Ice. It's in uh, Claremont, Florida, which is the suburbs of Orlando. Um, Snowmo's is as family-owned and family-run as you can possibly get. Um, it's a food trailer, but a semi-permanent location, meaning it stays in the same spot. We're set up in a gas station parking lot. I know around the country that's very common in different areas, different places where you'll have um, uh, shops set up all over the place. Here in Orlando, it's not. Um, it's not something you see very often, uh, largely because of um, city regulations. In fact, I was this morning down the city council office, the, the city hall of Orlando, getting some things passed for another uh, location that we're working on. Uh, but we are one of the rare shops here in Orlando um, that is a semi-permanent food uh, trailer. We love the business. Um, I've been doing small business work for a long, long time. I've worked for a lot of brands and supported entrepreneurs and supported small businesses. My specialty has been around business development and processes. Uh, I've won some cool awards. My, my wife is uh, she's very uh, entrepreneurial as well. She's a realtor. And our crew, this is the most important reason why we do this, is our family, which is us here, my wife and I and our five kids. Um, our oldest is a daughter. I have to, uh, she's having the time of her life right now. She's been in England, uh, Europe, I should say. She's traveled all around Europe for the last couple of months working as a nanny. Uh, she's about to come home in a couple of days. In fact, my wife's over there now as well, uh, which means that me and our four boys, uh, we're here holding down the fort. I'm largely unsupervised for a couple of weeks, <laughs> which has been fun. And I think I've stayed out of trouble, but um, this is the crew and they are all very involved in our, our business as well. Uh, my present, there's really two main things I focus on I work on now. One is snowmows, and I'm going to give you a little bit more of an introduction to that in a second. The reason for that is because I think it will kind of help um, help kind of set the table for some more of what we're going to talk about, uh, how to handle uh, the off-season for your shaved ice business or your ice cream business or whatever other type of business that you have. Um, but um, largely as well, what I do is this group, Sweet, Sweet Profits. I started this because when I got going a couple of years back, you know, two, three years ago in the shaved ice world, I didn't find the training that I hoped that would be there. You know, at that time, um, when we got started with Snowmos, if somebody would have said to me, hey, pay me $5,000 and I'll walk you through everything, I probably would have written a check for twice as much just so I can go through 
how to get things going, how to set up, how to grow it, how to run it, how to manage it. We found bits and pieces of information all over the place, but not that one concise thing put together. So once we got things going and running smoothly and very profitable, I, I promised I'd give back and I'd do it. So that's what uh, Sweet Profits became. It's a training, it's resources, it's for food trucks, it's for shaved ice shops specifically, and it's helping you get whatever resources and information that you need, creating a community so you can network together. So please guys be active in the group, ask questions, um, get whatever help that you need in there also. A new thing I'm doing now is here on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram account's been around for a long time. It's got a bunch of followers on it, but I'm really now starting to do more content specific to shaved ice, uh, specific to food trucks. So if you're interested in kind of seeing the day in the life thing uh, of what at least our, our life is like, uh, feel free to watch along or follow along, I should say. Um, just Mr. Dot Snomo, Mr. Dot Scomo, excuse me, Mr. Dot Scomo. Feel free to check that out as well. Now, the other thing that I work on now is snow. I want to talk to you about this again to just kind of set the table for uh, the rest of our conversation here today. Uh, it's this cool looking food trailer. Um, we found the we found this shack uh, here locally in Orlando. There's a long story with that. Um, but ultimately, we found this shop and we um, we always we decided a while back we wanted to start this this crazy business. Uh, the reason for it is you look around Orlando, even though it's the middle of Florida, it's in the middle of the heat, there's not a lot of shaved ice shops around. Um, so we thought, heck, this could be a good opportunity for us. We also, uh, we wanted to teach our kids about business. We wanted to give our kids jobs. We want to local or hire and uh, give employment to other local kids. So we had all these different reasons going into this. But we had no idea what we're doing on the shaved ice side of things. The business side of it, I think we had a pretty good acumen about how to start a business, how to run it, how to manage it, the systems, the sales, the marketing, et cetera. But as far as the shaved ice, the food truck side of it, we had to learn everything all on our own, um, which we did. And it's worked out really well for us. Now, there was literal blood, sweat, and tears. And I mean tears. I cried in a couple of government offices at one point uh, to kind of get us going. Um, but once it got going, it's been a wonderful business. So we comfortably make six figures a year. Um, it runs without our day-to-day -day involvement. What I mean by that is we have staff who sits and they, they work in it and they, they run the shop every day. Um, yeah, we are involved. Yes, we're there some, but it's not something where I have to go work shifts or have to be at on a regular basis. Um, it's just built to run and to be smooth without us constantly being in it and still make great money for us, for our family. What's next for Snowmos, this is why I was in the, the city council office today, is we have a brick and mortar location. We have a lease on it. We have everything ready to go, except they can't figure out how to turn on the water inside of our building. <laughs> Once they get that figured out, um, we'll get started on that. This is on International Drive, which if you've been to Orlando, is kind of like the Las Vegas Strip, but a... Uh, a much more family friendly version of it, I guess we'll say. Um, we'll be opening up a shop there in a very heavy tourist uh, area. I'm so excited about it. This is what it looks like now. It's very ugly. Uh, this is what we hope it'll look like once we're done. Um, but we'll get snowmos up and running and make, really turn this into an awesome uh, building for us as well, an awesome location for us also. Now, let's kind of shift with that to winters because that's the point of why we're here. Um, our winter, specifically with snow modes, we've done a couple different things. We've, we've tried everything. We have stayed open full hours. We've scaled back hours. We've closed completely. So um, we've kind of seen a little bit about, um, you know, what's worked best and what hasn't worked well. I've also interviewed and talked with a ton of other shop owners, specifically shaved ice shop owners who are doing kind of the same thing. They figured out what is the best thing, what has worked for them as far as winters and so forth. So um, that's what we're going to talk about here today. So here's a picture of us when we closed for season 2019, we closed completely. Um, that ended up being a little funky because when we were supposed to open in 2020 was right as the, the pandemic was really getting going. Um, that made it a little more complicated opening, but we we're able to eventually this year and or sorry, 2020, 2021 has been excellent seasons for us. Uh, but the year before that we stayed open, I'm sorry, this, uh, uh, past year than 2020 and 2021. We stayed open all season. This is a picture of hot chocolate that we did. We tried some different things. We did a, a, a local menu or more of a seasonal menu. Uh, we'll talk about that. So there's some different things that we really looked at. So by way, that's by way of introduction, guys. I just want to kind of set the table here. Um, let's dive into a little bit more about what you should be doing and what you should kind of look at what makes the most sense. So as I get started in this, do me a favor, put in the chat. Um, let me know what are you thinking about doing for your business? Are you planning on staying open year round all through the winter? Are you planning on scaling back, meaning you'll be open some days, but not maybe as many days as you were before? Are you planning on closing completely? What's your thought process? What are you looking to do? I'd like to see that just because I want to kind of help set the, the stage for, um, you know, what's going to make most sense for you. Nicole mentioned you're going to be closing for the winter, um, which is, I think, is very common. You see a lot of different uh, shops will close completely for the winter. 
It's seasonal. It kind of depends where you're at. But this is where it kind of blows my mind a little bit. I'm in Florida, okay? I'm in one of the hottest places in the U.S. And still in Florida for the shaved ice business, it slows down tremendously. Like the numbers are pretty amazing how much slower it gets in the winter versus in the summer. So kind of depends. What do we do here? What, what's going to make the most sense? So let's go through and let's, let's help you walk through what's the best thing you need to do and figure out what's going to work out well for your specific business. The first thing I want you to really do, guys, is to assess where you're at and take a good, honest assessment about what's going on. Uh, I put in here the comment, you can't outmarket the weather. There's some real truth to that. And we'll talk about that a little bit. But when it comes to assessing it, it's looking at um, how is the past month or so going? How is it going for you? If you're in the same semi-permanent location uh, or permanent location, is business busy or is it slowing back? What's happening for you within your business? Take a good, honest look at that. Um, how long have you been around? If you've only been open for a month or two, it's going to be harder to, to stay open during the winter than if you've been open for a long time, you have a substantial customer base. How big is your social media following, your marketing following? How much reach do you really have with your community? I want you to kind of take a look at all those different things, the different things. And then what are other shops doing? Not necessarily just shaved ice shops, but other businesses. What are they doing? Do they, uh, the ones that tend to be seasonal, are they staying open? Are they closing? Kind of get a good sense and look around and say, this is kind of what's happening uh, around our area. So a couple of people are, are putting in the comments here. Alan says, my shop is located between two schools. He's contemplating between hot chocolate or coffee. Good, Alan. We're going to talk about that a little bit about making some changes to your, your uh, menu here and what might make, make the most sense. For Matt, he says, I'm, I'm uh, mobile and we're getting hard freezes in Texas. So I don't do as many events, but um, we do baking through online orders through the website. Very cool idea. It's a very nice idea as well. Maybe your main thing, shaved ice, won't work, but is there something else you can do to supplement um, and do, you do, you do something still your customer base? One thing, and this is going to get off topic a little bit, but I feel kind of important to talk about this for a second. Every single one of us, whether you realize it or not, you have what I call a media company. What I mean by that is you have viewers, you have followers, you have people who are paying attention to your business. And yeah, they're paying attention largely because of the main product that you offer, but that doesn't mean you can't do other things for them as well. So in the case of what um, was Matt who mentioned it, instead of just saying, hey, customer base, here's just shaved ice. He's saying, hey, here's baking that we're doing. Maybe it's pies or cakes. I don't know exactly what it is. Here's something else that we're doing and offering that to your customer base as well. So it's important. And I talk about this in other trainings. I'm going to talk about it for when we talk later on about our food truck marketing program. It's really, really important, guys, to be building customer lists, your list of your amount of, of your customers, your social media lists, your followers, text messaging, email, all that, to be building those lists. And this is one of those reasons why is because when your normal business doesn't work because of seasons, you can maybe shift a little bit and still offer them something and you still have customers here. Uh, another person mentions that they're in Long Island. I imagine up in Long Island, you have to deal with some, uh, some weather issues. It gets pretty cool up there. Uh, Janine says we're doing hot chocolate waffles topped with ice cream. I love that. That sounds delicious. I want to come get waffles right now. By the way, we did one of our specials this year. You can look back on it. We did, and I got this idea from another shop. Uh, we did a uh, blueberry waffles shaved ice. So it was all shaved ice and we put pieces of blueberry waffles on top. Go to our Snowmo's Instagram account. You can see some ideas there, what we did. That's that, waffles and shaved ice. I don't know. I think they kind of go nicely together. Uh, Rachel mentioned we're in Washington State. Our shaved ice trailer does not have three compartment sink. So our options are very limited with our strict health department. The three compartment sink, I think you will find everywhere. So you may want to consider, Rachel, um, building out your trailer, putting one in or installing one in. There's some, in fact, I have a link. If you uh, DM me, I have a link for one you could buy that's a, uh, a movable one, if you will. So it's not permanently built in, but it will still pass uh, health and uh, health department inspections. That might be an option for you. So that's as far as like kind of the first thing to take a look at is assess your situation. Where are you at? What are you playing with here? What options do you have? Let me go back through some of the examples we talked about here. Um, Alan, who says he's between two different schools, you probably have a great customer base right there who can come to your shop because of the two different schools. I would be more apt to trying to stay open and maybe I limit my hours if it gets a little bit slower, but staying open and doing what you're saying, contemplating hot chocolate or coffee. Alan, my recommendation for that is try both of them. See what sells best. You know, um, 
at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what we think about our business. It's what does the customer think? What is the customer is going to be right in this case? What are they buying from you specifically is what I, what I mean. So I would look into that and try both of them. Try hot chocolate, try coffee. If they both sell well, great, keep going with them. If they don't, tweak it a little bit. If you want to do one or the other, do that. But my recommendation is to try both of them. Now, if you'd like, if you'd like to talk about your specific situation, guys, feel free to shoot me a DM. Um, shoot it through here at Facebook. Um, I'm sorry, if you're on Zoom, you can find me on Facebook, you can find me on Instagram, you can find me all over the place. Send me a direct message and I'll be happy to kind of talk through with you your specific situation, but if you're not sure to kind of what to do there. But let's talk about some of the options and pros and cons about different options you can be doing now over the next uh, couple of months. Um, staying open completely, we're gonna start with that. And we did a little talk about this already. One thing it'd be nice to do is add to your menu something else, hot chocolate and coffee that we just mentioned here already, pretzels, churros, mini donuts, waffles. There's a bunch of other warm weather, or I'm sorry, warmer items you can sell during the cold weather that would could be nice to add to your uh, menu. Now, depends on your business setup as well. If you're staying in the same location and your customers are trained to come you, to you for your thing, absolutely offer them something else. Give them other options. Um, it will. It really can can help carry you through the winter if you have more things that they can come check out. If you are mobile, if you're going to an event to site to site to site, make sure you're advertising then more than you're just doing shaved ice. You don't want to just show up thinking the shaved ice truck is going to be there. All your branding outside is just shaved ice and they walk right past you to go check out another food truck because they didn't see that you're selling something else on top of that. So you have to make sure you're kind of loud about saying other things that you're, uh, you're offering here. Um, another route you can go is completely closing. Certainly a good option as well, if it makes sense for you. If in the end of the day, if you're staying open and you're not making enough money to justify staying open, there's nothing wrong with closing for, for certain seasons, especially if you're in a cooler part of the country. Um, when we first got started in this business, there was one shop in particular, I won't call them out because I don't think they want me to, to mention some of their, their secrets they do, but we talked to them and they said they were in a colder climate and they said, we stay open only from Memorial Day to Labor Day. And that's it, and we're not gonna change it. And during that period of time, they did well enough to support their family and to make the income that they wanted for the rest of the entire year. So they just knew their summers, they're working Memorial Day to Labor Day, and then they're closing and that's it. Now, they probably, because they have a good customer base, they probably could stay open and could bridge this, you know, the time through the winters and offer something else or you know, have extra hours or whatever it might be, and probably could make some extra revenue doing that. But for the, them, for the lifestyle, it didn't make sense. They just wanted to work for the summer and be off the rest of the year. There's nothing wrong with doing that if that's what makes sense for you as well. So the other option you can try is minimizing your schedule. What I mean by that, like for example, our shop right now, we're open seven days a week. Um, we, it works. I mean, we're in Florida, it works, right? In the winter though, I will scale back probably December, January, February, where we'll be open maybe three or four days a week. The reason for that is a couple of reasons for that. Number one, we just don't have enough demand every day, even though it's a warmer climate. And you Northerners are laughing, saying, come on, you guys are in Florida. But you have to remember, people in Florida, we have a thin blood down here. Now, I grew up in Chicago, so I understand the cold. I live in I lived in Arizona and Florida, so I understand the heat as well. So I understand all of this. Um, but there's a certain temperature line, and I know that temperature line. I figured that out, that once it's below this specific temperature, people don't come out to the shop anymore for just shaved ice. Now we did hot chocolate last year. We did some other warmer things. People did come for that, but if it's just shaved ice, they're not going to come. So what we're going to do this year is we're going to scale back and be open days when it's warmer and be open only a couple days during the week. The reason for that then, or another benefit of that is it get, builds up this pent up demand, if you will. Um, people kind of know, Hey, I can't get it every day of the week. So I have to make sure I go that one, the days that they're open to go check out their shop because they're going to be closed other days of the week. It help, really helps you build up your demand. And I think that's a, a good thing for you to be thinking about doing as well. Now, by the way, guys, one thing we're going to talk about here in a second is what to do no matter what, as far as um, if you're closed or if you're, you know, if you're going to be shut down for the entire season, I have specific tips for you guys to be doing. Um, we'll be talking about that here. We'll transition that here in a second. Now, Another option you could try, and I've seen this work really well, is if, if you're going to minimize your schedule or if you're going to close, is just focus more on events or pop-up days. Pop-up days are, um, you know, you could just pop up and open in a certain location or could find like a tourist location or a busier location, work on an agreement with whoever owns that location, say we're going to be open for just this one day, bring your trailer, your shop there, open up for a day or maybe two or three days. You can do things like that. Uh, events, what I mean by that could be your, your, your fall festivals, all your festivals and farmers markets, do some of those and try those out. 
or it could be um, catering, which I actually, I like that the best. We do a lot of catering for our business as well. And we just did a wedding last weekend. We just got booked for another one. We did baseball uh, fields. We've done uh, company events. I have another company event next week. We have a bunch of catering events that we do. We don't bring the whole trailer for that. We just set it up on tabletop. But in the winter, a lot of businesses are willing to book catering and shaved ice is a nice thing because it's usually, it could be an indoor event. So setting up and doing for holiday parties or company events or school fundraisers or school functions. This is a great time when you're not busy at your regular shop to go out and do catering through other businesses or, or at other businesses or other parties or you know birthday parties or whatever it might be. Now's a good time for you to really do a big push and get more catering gigs. Every single time, if you follow our Snowmo's uh, Instagram account, every single time I post about catering, I get floods of requests, a handful of people reaching out, asking for some uh, input about uh, us catering their event. And I'll tell you, the money you make in catering often is better than the money you make in a day at your shop. So it may not be bad to do some more catering. So that's an idea of something that you can try. So again, those are kind of your, your options here that you need to think about. Start with, be honest with yourself, assess where you're at. And then make a decision from there. What am I going to do? Am I going to stay open completely? Am I going to close completely? Am I going to do some sort of hybrid thing where I minimize my schedule and I do pop-up days or events or things like that? Figure out what makes the most sense for you there. And again, like I said, if you'd like to DM me and we can trade some messages about your specific situation, I'm happy to do that. Now, regardless of what you choose, though, there's a couple of key areas I find it important to focus on in your business. Now, these are things that they're always important. But if you have a little downtime, whether it's because you're closed completely or you're scaled back or you're just not as busy, these are some really important things to be doing in your business that I want you to really focus on and take care of and spend some time on in the, in the winter months working on. By the way, guys, this is the part, if you're taking notes, take some specific notes on this. I have some action items for you. I have some things that, for you that I think will help you really kind of dive in uh, on your business here during the, the next couple of months. Um, so we're going to go through each of these, these uh, key areas. The first is to dream. Now, I have been accused a couple of times uh, by my wife and others of dreaming big or having you know big ambitions and just dreaming about something like I want to create or I want to do something like that. And I think it's actually very healthy and very important to do within your business. But have you been like this? Um, in fact, I just caught myself on this the other day. We've been running snowmows for three or four years now. A lot of it is running just it's a finely tuned machine. There's a lot of pieces of it that I don't have to touch very often. I can just kind of I've set it up. I've worked on it, I've tinkered the nut and it just runs and I can just forget about it. But what happens then occasionally is I get complacent and I think, nah, I just don't think about it or just let it kind of, you know, again, run itself, but not necessarily put enough emphasis or focus on improvement or figure out the next step. So what I'll try to do at least once a quarter, um, I'll sit down and kind of go through a, a mastermind session for myself of just dreaming about what's the next phase of my business? What does it look like? What do we want to do? What do we want to accomplish? We do this a lot of areas of life. But I think it's important for you to do the same thing. So now for the as we're finishing up 2021, what's your vision for your business? And let's start with here are a couple of things. Your coming year. What does 2022 look like for you? Sit down and get really specific about how you're going to design your business for the coming year. I did at the beginning of this year some business plan um, courses, some classes. You could probably still find those in the group. I have a revised version of, in fact, I have right here, I'm not going to show you, I have some, uh, some papers here, I'll show you the folder. I have papers in a folder that we're working on, um, that's going to be a whole new um, class that we're going to go through about business planning, but I want you for now to start thinking about what is the business plan for your business look like in the coming year? What do you want to accomplish? What do you want it to look like? How much does it grow? What does it do? What is it, you know, what happens? What do you offer? And really dream about what you want your business to look like. And then your big picture goal coming up as well. What do you want that to be? I'll tell you for me, I have a very specific end goal I would like Snowmos to look like. And I work towards that. In fact, I, I have reminders and tokens around me reminding me of what, what the end goal will look like for that. So have a big picture in mind. And now's a good time to really refine that. What does the next year look like? What does the big picture look like? Does the big picture mean I sell it someday? Do I hand it off to my kids? Do I run this until the day I die? What does it look like? Really get kind of clear on that again, refine that again. So then that way you can work on that and you can have it in the right direction. That becomes kind of your roadmap. So that's the first thing I want you to do is really dream. Now, uh, when we do some more classes on this, some more annual planning classes, of course, I'll talk about it. Uh, I'll promote that a little bit through the group. But for now, I'm just start working on that. Or you can find some of the old classes I did um, in the group. We'll talk to you about uh, annual planning and how to dream about your business a little bit. So that's one. That's key area number one. 
Area number two, excuse me while I take a drink here, is systems, maintenance, and legal. Now, personally for me, this is the boring section. <laughs> But it's so important. It's, the, it's probably the most important section of, of your entire business is focusing on these different things. So let's go through each of them first. Systems. What, and, and I, there's a million different ways I can go with systems, but the first things I want you to look at is what apps should you be using in your, in your business? And what I mean by apps, it's call it software apps, uh, whatever it may, it may be. So how are you running your payroll, your scheduling, your accounting, what tools you use for your marketing. Um, are you using a, a Canva or something like that? Or are you using a scheduler like later? Are you using Instagram, TikTok, Facebook? What systems like that are you using inside your business? What apps are there are you looking using inside your business? Make a list of all of them, write them down. This is everything that I'm doing. This is everything that I'm working on. And the reason for that is it's kind of an audit saying, ah, we're paying for this app. We probably don't need it. Let's get rid of it anymore. Or let's dive into on our, like we use Gusto, for example, for our payroll. Let's look in that. Do we have just the actual employees in there? Or am I paying, paying for extra employees I don't need to? Do I have it set up correctly? Is it talking correctly with my scheduling app? Just looking at all of your different systems here in your business, just make sure that, you know, just do a quick audit on it. Are they working right? Do I have the right things? Am I paying for what I should? Do I need to upgrade to a different level? Just take a look at that. And that ties into the re reviewing the expenses. I would look back over the entire year of your business and look at all your different categories. Where did I spend all my money? Um, did I expend wisely? Is there something I could have cut back on? And with that, start looking at, well, where else could I be going to buy um, product for to lower my food costs? Or is there another uh, product line I want to carry? Just getting good accounting on these things. So you have a good clean picture of what's happening inside of your business. Take time to be doing those things because it'll help you run your business more smoothly. Maintenance on that side of it. Every single one of us, you have a, a, we have a, a truck, trailer, shop, building, tabletop, whatever it is, do maintenance on your machinery, on your building. So fix, update, refresh your shop, your equipment. Um, if you have a shop, you might have rust on it somewhere. Maybe it's leaking. Maybe there's been that annoying countertop that keeps shaking up to take care of it. Take care of that stuff. Spend some time on that for your um, equipment, every single one of you has a shaver. Are you maintaining that thing right? When's the last time you changed the blades or sharpened the blades? When's the last time you tightened the, the screws and the belts on if it has that? When's the last time you greased it? If you're not sure how to do all that stuff, Google it, YouTube it. Um, most of these manufacturers have some information about that, but spend the time on your machines. Those are an investment. Those are not inexpensive items. Make sure that they're, they're tuned, they're working well, and they're running smoothly for you. Spend some time on that. Clean out your inventory of your supplies. I have, I'm here in my home office here, but I have next to me like this gigantic bucket, I'll just show you, of like plastic stuff, you know? And over the past year, I've just been throwing more bottles and tops and funnels and stuff in there. I should go through that bucket. <laughs> I should clean that thing out because there's probably stuff I don't need anymore or I forgot I had and we can use it in a different way. So go through your stuff, we'll just call it. Go through all of your supplies and also your inventory. Look at the concentrate bottles. Have they expired? Do you have any, any food uh, product that's expired? Do you have any stuff that you shouldn't have anymore? And just take some time and go through and clean all that stuff out. And that's just going to help you have a little bit more of the, the maintenance taken care of in your business. And the legal side of it, review everything. Um, make sure you renew your permits, your licenses, stay on top of those, your food safe certificate, whatever other things you need legally local for your area. Just make sure you don't fall out of compliance with those. Just stay on top of it. Usually pretty easy to renew. Spend some time now over the next couple of months doing that. And the last piece we're going to talk about is marketing. Um, as far as other things you'd be focusing on working right now. Take a look at your menu. Do you need to refresh it or update it? You know, I know about us. We have, I think it's 42, 44, some of that flavors. Uh, and we track in square what items sell the most and don't. We have about five flavors. I just don't need to care anymore. So we're going to take those off the menu and print up a whole new menu. But on top of that, there's been some new things I think would be fun to add to the menu. So maybe it's time to refresh the menu, make some updates to that. Do you want to, uh, um, you know, make that look good? Do you need to adjust your prices as well? This is probably a whole other class we should have someday, guys, on, on raising your prices. <laughs> I know when I say that to some people, immediately their palms start sweating. What do you mean to raise my prices? And someday you're going to want to raise your prices and adjust your prices. So Let's take a look at that. How are you doing on your pricing right now? Do you need to make some ch changes to that? And the other thing that I can't stress this enough, I say do it to do this every year, and sometimes I'm good at it, sometimes I'm not, but is to plan out now your specials for the entire year. Um, I think it's no secret that one of the things that help drive business immediately is by carrying some sort of special. 
you know, the special could be a special item, could be special pricing, could be a special day, could be a free day, whatever it might be, has specials or events or promotions. Map those out now for the entire year. And if you're really good, and this will help you a ton, take pictures now during the off season and do your marketing content now during the off season of all of your specials and set them up inside of your scheduling apps for your, um, for your marketing. So then that way during the year, you don't have to think about it anymore. It's already set up. It's already done. Now I recognize saying that out loud, that is a ton of work I'm saying, but if you've got some time over a couple of months, break it down into bite-sized pieces and do that, put that all together. You will thank yourself later because then what happens is during the season, when you're busy again, you don't have to worry about, oh, what special are we going to run now? What are we going to offer now? You have it all set up. You have it all built out. All you have to do is hit post on it and it'll run and you can put all these different things together. Create a ton of content around that now. And I promise you that it will help you quite a bit. It'll make life a whole lot easier for you down the road. The last piece on marketing, I'm going to talk about the master plan here in a second, if you guys allow me some time to do that as well, kind of put things all together. But the other thing I'd say, spend a lot of time on forming partnerships. I did a class on this. This is probably one of the most watched classes um, and definitely uh, the most buzz that came after the class I did uh, a few months ago was on forming partnerships. My Most of my professional background was in building strategic partnerships and sponsorships for brands, which basically means get a company A and company B together, together have them work together and market for each other. Do that with your local businesses as well. Do this with your, your shop as well. So farm part, farm, form partnerships, excuse me, by networking, go to the, you know, the Chamber of Commerce events, BNI networking events, uh, what other local events you can be to where the local business owners are at. Go attend those, network, create good relationships. Um, find other local businesses you can promote. I have here, actually I have one right in front of me, these free shaved ice cards. I talk about these a lot as well. Um, we have dozens of businesses, about a dozen, just not a dozen, about a dozen businesses that hand these out for us all the time. Um, so as they're out doing their work, they give these out to their customers for free. Um, and then they come in and turn back to our shop. Um, this was just easy for me going and asking a bunch of businesses to, Hey, would you be willing to give out some free shaved ice? Um, we give those out all the time. So go farm, some, find some new partnerships like that of businesses who are willing to promote you and you can promote them also. Go get it through your schools. I talked to another school yesterday that I haven't talked to for a while. Um, we're working on a deal. Well, every report card is going to have a coupon from Snowmos as well to every single kid of that school. I think that's pretty valuable, right? Work on those. Work on those relationships. Get into the schools, what, regardless of the level of school. Heck, go to the colleges even. Work with schools and figure out how could you get your product in front of their customers, and excuse me, their students, and do it in a way that's beneficial to the school as well. And the influencers and social media accounts, Every area has, has influencers, has somebody who's out there taking pictures of what they're eating and posting it. Go find those people, form relationships with them, and have them come out to your shop and create some content together. That's just another thing that you can work on during the offseason. So guys, there is a ton of different pieces that you can work on during the offseason. The way I would put this all together, I, I call this the master plan. And this combines, by the way, guys, two of our programs that we offer. Um, these are paid programs. Uh, I'll be transparent with that. Um, that will help you guys really with your shaved ice businesses, um, both on the setup, the management, and the growth side of it specifically. And I thought I was thinking about this, like what's something cool I can do for our, our group right now as we're slowing down um, for the shaved ice businesses are slowing down for the season. What's something that I can do to kind of help them make sure that the off season is really beneficial. So I put together this, I'm going to show you this and see if it's something that will kind of help you guys really get going on, um, get your businesses ready to go real quick What shaved ice Academy is some of you, I know, haven't heard about this before. It's a program I developed. And as I said, it's the thing I wish I would have had when I started our business years ago, it's, uh, the framework systems, all the resources about how to get going with the shaved ice business how to manage it, and how to grow it. So it's not just for the, the people just getting started, although it absolutely helps them. I'd say if you've been in business for three or four years or less, uh, this is going to help you a ton. If you've been in longer than that, not as much of it will help, but there's certainly pieces of it that would help you as well. But this is really designed to help you uh, put, you know, really get accelerated on your business and get going to the next level. It's everything I wish I would have had when we got going. Its format of it is, is training videos. There's 40 plus training videos. There's worksheets, checklists, templates, lists, and a bunch of resources built in there for you um, that will help you get going. So some of the things like, for example, I want to show you like worksheets or, or checklists, sorry, inside of everybody's shop should be checklists of, hey, when you open the shop, do this. When you close the shop, do this. When you're handling the money, do this. When it's downtime, do this. When you need to clean, do this. 
we have those checklists available for you as templates for you to work on uh, for help you to set them up for your business as well. Uh, templates, for example, I talked about the free shaved ice card, or we have a frequent buyer card, or we have different things we, we built inside of Canva. I have templates I've available for you. Lists, all the supplies you would ever need, the food supplies, the, the shop supplies, the technology apps, I have all that listed out for you with links to easily go get them. Um, we even have in there, and I get asked this question a ton, is what, what uh, concentrates do we use? What brand do we use for our concentrates? We use a bunch of different ones, but I list out inside of here all the different ones we use. And that's valuable because what we did, we took the most popular flavors and we bought as many of them as we could from different vendors. So we take strawberry, for example. And then we bought eight or so different strawberries. We taste tested all the eight different strawberries and we said, that's the one we like the best. And it wasn't just us doing it. We'd have a whole bunch of people together. We do all these taste tests. And we knew out of all the different strawberries are available, here's the one that's the best. We list that for all the different flavors. So it'll make it easier for you to say, hey, here's some of the best things that are available for you. Um, the best different concentrates of flavors that are available for you. All listed and all available for you inside the food truck. I'm sorry, the Shaved Ice Academy program. I love this program. Uh, I've put tons of time and effort into building these things. I think it's a tremendous value for you. It's really going to help you get things going and get things started. The other thing I have in companion with that as well is food truck marketing. I'm going to show you guys in a second how these actually come together right now. Food truck marketing is designed for shops, uh, for really any type of food shop, food truck, or food trailer. It doesn't just have to be shaved ice. But this is, um, I haven't heard the quote from Disney World, uh, from Walt Disney. Disneyland will never be completed as long as there's room for imagination in the world. Um, I will never stop building this class, uh, this program, sorry. I will always be adding to food truck marketing. And as such, as I keep adding, I keep raising the price on it. But what you can get now is you'd get access to this and the core pieces that are there ready for you. Um, and then as things get added to it, there's no additional charge. You just get it because you got in very early. You got in when it got started. So this is, again, training programs. And this is more marketing-based, marketing-specific. I have a training program, the only way to grow your business. And that is actually one of my favorite ones. We break down kind of the philosophy and ways that you can only grow a business. Uh, we talk about the big three marketing platforms, social media, how to use it, how to run ads. All the things that I'm finding and learning as well, I keep sliding into this program as well. And I'll keep doing that over time as we go out and we figure out things that work, or I bring in experts from other worlds that are doing really well with marketing. I keep adding those and putting in this program. And it's something that will, um, it will always be something new for you to kind of accelerate and get started. So what I'm doing with this, the Shaved Ice Academy program, um, we, chart, we sell that for $7.97. <coughs> Food truck marketing right now, is 297. What I did, um, this is what I thought would be kind of nice to do, just kind of get things going together, is I'll bundle both of those together for you. So you get both of them for just the price of Shaved Ice Academy. So for 797, you get Shaved Ice Academy and Food Truck Marketing. By the way, I do have uh, payment plans in, included in there as well. If, if, if all at once is a little hard for you, we can break that into payments for you. Uh, but you get that as well as a bonus on top of that. Um, this will only be for the first three people just because my time is very limited right now. Uh, I'll do some bonus private one-on-one -on -one consulting calls with you. Um, I always say one, but usually turn into two or three because I like doing, I like talking about things. So we'll get on the phone, <coughs> we'll talk about specifically what's going on with you and your business, and we'll get things, uh, you know, kind of help you point in the right direction, specifically what's been the right thing for you to um to just really work and to grow your business there. So if you're interested in any of that, um, just sweet-profits.com slash bundle. You can go in there and get some more information about those, um, get started on those programs. As I said, um, especially that food truck marketing one, we keep adding more and more things into that. Um, over time, I'll keep adding more to that uh, program and I think it'll be a big uh, benefit for you. So that's what I had as far as our, our training in our class today. I see some more uh, comments have come in there. If you have some more questions or things you wanna ask guys, please put it in the, in the chat right now. Um, excuse me. I see. Let me jump into this. Man, I'm losing my voice. John, uh, John in Baltimore City. John says, I'm in Baltimore. I have a mobile food uh, shaved ice cart. I'm posted in front of a Hispanic grocery store. I think about Hispanic hot chocolate and coffee and cocoa bombs. Absolutely. Um, play to whatever your demographic is, whatever is local, whatever you're close to, serve what they want. Business doesn't have to be hard, guys. All you really need to kind of figure out is what do people want and provide it to them. That's kind of the main uh, uh, pieces before you is do that. So I would totally do that. I would also play with, if you're not doing this already, John, was it the mango natto? Um, that's the mango uh, shaved ice with some chamoy in it, um, some tahini on the top. 
I would definitely do that. Any spicy things, anything that you think will play to um, the Hispanic neighborhood there, absolutely figure out ways offered. The other thing you can do, John, that will help you a bunch is just ask them, hey, what, what would you like to see more of? What would make the most sense? Um, put that together. You might want to do, try, um, I just forgot the name of it. That's that Cuban coffee. Cafecito, those little coffees, maybe you could try that too. You get people geeked up on the caffeine. <laughs> Um, Vipin, I just paid for food truck marketing. Can I get, the, can I pay the balance of the combo? Actually, you can. Thank you for mentioning there. I was going to email you earlier today, but I got tied up and something else wasn't able to. So I've had over the past couple of weeks, um, a handful of people that have came in and um, actually a bunch more than that. A bunch of people came in on food truck marketing at started in that class. Um, if you've bought food truck marketing within the last two weeks, I absolutely will honor this guys. I'm, I'm a, I'm a realistic, nice, easygoing guy on certain things, and I want to make sure you get good value out of this. So um, you just pay the difference between the two. I'll upgrade you. Uh, I'll shoot you an email on how to do that. Uh, anyone who bought Academy over the last couple of weeks, I'll shoot you an email with some instructions on how to do that. But yeah, absolutely. If you're in Academy, you'll do that and vice versa. If you're in Shaved Ice Academy program, um, you like to get access in the food truck marketing, I'll make that available for you as well. Um, I think we covered a lot of these other questions here. We're doing hot chocolate, uh, waffles and snowballs. Yeah, I answered these before from Rubino, from Rachel, from Janine. So that's it. I think we got all the questions. So thank you guys for tuning in today. Um, let me know what other training classes, information, things you'd like to hear more about. And I'd love to make that available for you. Uh, we're doing, as you see, more of these classes. Some are with me. Some I'm interviewing other people. We'll keep doing a bunch more of those. But I want to make sure that we're, whatever you need some help with, whatever you're interested in, that we, uh, we get more of that available for you. So with that, I'm going to sign off today. Um, again, if you are interested, if you want to talk about your specific situation, shoot me a direct message. We can kind of figure out what makes sense for you for the winter. Um, if you are interested, um, I, please get started with these programs for you. Um, I should say this. This is, uh, this is important to mention as well. I'm not going to keep these, you know, buy one, get one free deals like this for very long. I'm going to do this for the next, uh, for the rest of this week. And that's it. Uh, I'm not going to keep offering it. It's just something that I thought as we got started for this season, I thought it'd be a good thing to do. So there is some urgency behind that. Um, so if you're interested in it, get started in it, sweet-profits.com slash bundle. It's on your screen there. I'll put it in the chat as well, but hope you guys had an awesome day and I'll talk to you again soon.